Hello, me hearties. Gather ye grog, pull up a chair, and I'll tell ye a tale. This be the story of Captain Toot, a master angler, a daring sailor, and yea, the scurviest pirate ever to sail through the deep blue. Oh, hey man. Look, some people are still nursing the New Year's hangovers, so let's take it a notch back. My head is killing me. Good point. Let's, uh... Switch to our super soft voices then, and spare your noggin, which fits perfectly for floating across the relaxing expanses of today's game. Sail forth, a casual and charming pirate fleet game. But if you still want to hear the pirate talk version, lad, you can check it out right over here. My name is Boss Sauce. And I'm Roland Guns, and together we, we are, are the, the Two-Headed two Hero. Sail Forth is the first retail offering from developer David Evans, also known as Festive Vector. As the game opens, you jump into the salty boots of Captain Toot and start a seaward adventure through a chain of gorgeous tropical isles. You find yourself stuck on a little raft in the middle of a deep blue something. But not to worry, your sidekick Goose is here to show you the ropes, and soon you'll be setting sail on a wondrous journey through the big beautiful deep blue. From these lowly beginnings, Sailforth sees you piloting a large variety of seaworthy vessels, battling vicious pirate hordes, and gathering allies until your fleet is the most formidable in all the realm. But that's far from all you'll be doing. There's plenty of islands to chart, unique fish to catch and catalog, and interesting characters to meet. None of this would matter if the sailing wasn't any fun, but Sailforth chooses to place accessibility prominently across its bow. This is not a simulation placing you in charge of every pulley and rig. Piloting your vessels is simple and intuitive and feels especially good with a controller. Storms or huge breaker waves can still capsize your craft if you hit them at the wrong angle, but for the cost of a few planks, wayward captains can buy back any ships that have been wrecked at sea. At the base level, players are responsible for just two things, the speed of your craft and the angle of your sails. The first gear and reverse gear on your sailing meter break out the oars, ensuring you never run aground. Navigation is simple and fun enough by itself, but many other factors affect how your craft controls. Light craft are naturally more speedy and maneuverable, while a weighty vessel brimming with heavy cannons will sail low in the water and turn more sluggishly. There's also a wide variety of different craft for sale. Ha <laughs> ha. A little joke. And they all handle differently, depending on the configurations of the cannon ports, the shape of the hull, its number of oars, and the cut of your jib. Each is highly customizable as well. A good ship is nothing if you can't christen it with a fitting name after all and some of these worthy sailing vessels lend themselves to different roles. There's a Viking langskip that's better at rowing than at sailing, for example. It's not so fast, but holds a bunch of bloodthirsty crew at the ready for boarding easy prey. You might outfit a fast ship with chase cannons and ballistae as sort of a mobile sniper, or slap heavy armor on a chunky galleon and stuff it with gatling guns. Since you have the ability to assume command of up to four vessels in your little flotilla and switch freely between them, there's plenty of opportunity to get your sea legs upon different decks. I found myself wishing for a bigger fleet size at times. Think of the damage you could do with eight ships, but the limit of four is adequate enough without being overly complex to manage. Plus, the AI captains 
often seem to have a few barnacles on their brains. They are fairly competent at sea battle, but tend to bump into friendly ships on the reg. On occasion, they also have some troubles with targeting land defenses, but these minor complaints take little away from the experience, especially when you consider the low, low costs of repairing and replacing your vessels. This plank-based economy ties a tight sailor's knot to the sandboxy themes of sail forths, boat building, and exploration. Being too careless can still cost an arm and a peg leg when it comes to repairing your flagships in the middle of a heated cannonade. But loot is easy enough to harpoon into your hold, and costs quickly become trivial as you plunder the richer ships in the sea's far reaches. And let's not forget the crew. A pirate ship without a crew of salty scalawags is, well, just another boat. You'll be picking up lots of these adorable blue goons during your travels. Each one has a name and a specialty that provides a small buff to the ship. As you sail, these miniature sea dogs shout helpful advice and alerts in their weird dialect of piratey gibberish, which is translated by a helpful comic bubble over their heads. They sort of remind me of those little Fisher Price Little People toys for toddlers, or perhaps Lego minifigures, with little touches added to differentiate their designs. Watching them march around deck, or casting a fishing line, or engaging in a bloody boarding maneuver is simply adorable. In case simply gunning down pirates and sailing your ships about isn't floating your boat, there are plenty of side activities to keep you occupied. Side quests often uncover important artifacts that can lead to upgrades later on down the line. And fishing provides some substantial early game income, as well as unlocking new sail patterns and boat colors for your intrepid fleet. A host of minigames can also be found scattered about the archipelago, including target ranges, boat races, and photo opportunities. These high seas will keep you busy for quite a while indeed, but as an added bonus, you can simply ignore the campaign, leave those pressures behind, and jump into the free sail mode, where you can choose the level of challenge you prefer from a pile of customizable options and putter around a randomly generated ocean for as long as you like. At some point, after taking all this in, you'll likely hear the call to adventure. Now, when we last left our hero, Captain Toot, he was just learning his way about the raft after rescuing his first mate, Goose. Soon after he gets his sea legs, the Skull Clan will begin pillaging the archipelago, and Toot finds it in his best interest to send these scurvy dogs down to Davy Jones's locker. As it turns out, the Skull Clan is hoarding shards of a strange pink gem that brings madness to the minds of many, and they'll stop at nothing to get their hands on every last piece of the mysterious Deep Rock. The Skull Clan aren't the only ones after the power of the stones. Mighty crabs, massive ships, and horrible sea creatures all clamor for a chance at that sweet, sweet rock. With the talents of a crazy scientist on his side, and a host of allies at his back, Captain Toot sets forth to eradicate this foul substance from the surface of the deep blue. But will his trusty cannons and companions be enough to save the seas? Yes. 
Yes, they will. At first glance, Sailforth may appeal to a younger crowd with its bright colors and simplistic storytelling, but its goofy charm and intuitive mechanics make it a call to adventure that can be enjoyed by gamers of any age and skill level. And while the main plot slowly circles in on the origins of the Deep Rock, many smaller conundrums abound within these islands. There's a lot of subtle environmental details that instill a deeper sense of mystery here. Why do these diving suit guys at the lighthouse act so friggin' weird? Where does the Skull Clan keep getting all these giant skulls from? And why do these ancient artifacts seem so familiar? Pardon us. We got a little excited and had to take a moment to compose ourselves. Let's continue. Of course, the real main character in Sailforth is the glorious deep blue itself. Here, the sea is your mistress, and you'll be spending a lot of fond moments with her as you chart your courses through placid channels and violent storms alike. The use of color throughout this game is fantastic and you'll often catch yourself entranced as the sun is swallowed up on the horizon in one of the many beautiful pink sunsets. There are several beautiful biomes to explore, each with their own particular characteristics, and surprises seem to lurk around every corner of the pond here. Creature designs are also a high point. From the scurvy sea dogs mentioned before to the large cast of characters inhabiting the various desert isles dotted throughout the deep blue, a cadre of spy frogs in barrel submarines conspires against the march of robotic tech tankers and destroyers in one biome, and islands have been taken over by corrupted crabs in another. The ship dealer is a tiny octopus in a diving suit and the Emporium is hosted by a trio of old salty sailors that bicker back and forth like old sisters. Everything shares the same simplistic shaded low poly look, but there's enough subtle animation and fluid movement to bring it all to life. The boss fights themselves are appropriately epic, tossing your sturdy sea craft to and fro like playthings as they unleash all manner of horribleness upon you. Most of the fights themselves are multi-stage battles that have some sort of gimmicky mechanic, and they're all very enjoyable experiences. Worry not, sailor. Even the most tense and high-stakes battles in Sailforth manage to keep an even keel through ample forgiveness mechanics. But after you achieve glorious victory, you'll be on to the next horizon, wind lapping your sails over some gentle synth-based tunes. The sound design here is equally enjoyable with the little pips and squeaks of your piratey pals frantically filling the air over cannon fire or the inevitable crunch of one hull crashing gently into another. Even the battle tracks reflect this soft feeling, despite their added menace and percussion. It's all very cute and low intensity, and it fits into the vibe perfectly. Even though Sailforth is largely a relaxing, low-key experience, only the filthiest landlubber would dare sleep on this piratey treasure. There's no scurvy microtransactions after your doubloons. No bilge-sucking season passes. It's just an excellent, cute, casual game to chill out on. Whether you want to swash buckles through an adorable pirate adventure, or simply lose yourself in exquisite seascapes. The game's self-guided pace of traveling, 
Battling, looting, and upgrading is as intense or as relaxing as you want to make it. And this all comes together to make Sail Forth a captivating experience. On the very first day I picked up Sail Forth, I played it for an entire evening straight. And the next time I blinked, it was four in the morning. I closed my dry, salt-encrusted eyes for but a few hours and woke up the next day, going right back into the experience. If this isn't a solid testament to the game's addictive quality, I don't know what is. If you enjoy the aquatic adventure and moments of zen in other sailing games, like Valheim, or Assassin's Creed Black Flag, you'll find a lot to love in Sail Forth. And if you're looking for more interesting indies to get lost in, I encourage you to check out some of the other humble offerings on our channel. If you liked this video, we'd love it if you'd take a second to press the subscribe button in your browser. If you see a bell-shaped icon, click on it with your mouse cursor, or you can leave us the ultimate kindness of a tip on our Ko-Fi page. Thanks for watching, have a great year, and we'll see you on the next Two-Headed Hero.